There are three days that define my adult life. On December 9th, 2012, I got a call from my grandmother. We would talk every Sunday to catch up about life, but it wasn't an ordinary call. My grandmother's name is Beatrice Jackson. And since I was a kid, we've lovingly referred to her as Baca. Baca was raised in Hodge, Louisiana, a small town east of Shreveport. She grew up in a time of violent segregation and the Jim Crow laws. She met my grandfather, Alson, and when he returned from World War II, they joined the Black Migration West. They settled in Northern California. Baca had two children, and Baca started a career. She understood the power of education and decided to complete her college degree. It's why education is extremely important in our family and one of the main reasons I ended up at Stanford University. Baca is also a deeply religious black woman. Just picture a tiny old black woman with a Bible in one hand and a belt in the other. <laughs> Actually, she had three belts and she named them. Isn't that right, Mom? <laughs> there was Dr. Pepper, Dr. Feelgood, and you won't do that again. <laughs> she was big on discipline, but she loved us fiercely. When I think of my grandmother, I think of her strength and the metal of her spirit. She was someone who never backed down from a challenge, no matter how hard it seemed. It's why I was nervous to speak to her on that winter day. There was something I needed to tell her, and I wanted her to hear it from me first. But by the time she called, she'd already heard the news from my mother that I was gay. In truth, I was terrified of her reaction. Like with many people coming out, you hope that everyone is going to be accepting, but you never really know. But when my grandmother said, Jason, your mother told me that you're gay and I love you, it lifted me. A light went off. When I heard her reaction, I knew then and there I could overcome anything. In our conversation, she spoke to me about what Jesus had taught her. She said it was all about love. As she was talking, all I could think about was how inspiring it was for this woman, who was in her mid-80s at the time, to express nothing but words of love and respect. She said that she was proud of me, but that as a family, we needed to work on our communication and we needed to be better for each other. She was the one who actually suggested that my mom and I speak to a professional therapist. Baca was a devout Christian woman and in our community, the idea of therapy, well, you just don't do that. You don't talk about your problems. Therapy for us is talking to family members or going to church. But she knew it was what we needed. It would bring us closer together. Baca was our glue. That day on the phone with her gave me the strength to both live in and celebrate my truth. My grandmother helped me to find the words. May 6, 2013 was also no ordinary day. It was a hectic 24 hours filled with tears, laughter, and hope. I couldn't predict everything that would unfold once the announcement was made in Sports Illustrated, but I wanted many of my NBA family to hear it from me first. I reached out to Jerry Stackhouse and Darren Williams, to Doc Rivers, David Stern, Adam Silver, and many others. After the announcement landed, I received even more calls, two in particular. One from Oprah Winfrey saying she wanted to interview my immediate family. Originally, my family said they would take a back seat to all of the media requests, that it was best that I do all of the talking. But for Oprah, <laughs> they would definitely make an exception. In fact, I remember my mom telling me that she needed to get her hair done, her nails, she needed to borrow a scarf from a friend, looking sharp for Oprah. <laughs> the second call I got was from President Obama. 
He said something to me I will never forget. He told me that my actions today will have a positive impact on someone that I might not ever meet in my lifetime. I remember thinking how incredible it is to make the path easier for someone else's life, to have that opportunity. I was no different. The people who'd come before me had done the same, from Billie Jean King, Martina Navratilova, John Amici, and many other LGBTQ athletes who paved the road. And now I was making the path easier for somebody else. I was fortunate to end the day with family. I spent it with my brother and his wife at their home here in Los Angeles. I got to tuck in my nieces and nephew. That was also my grandmother's touch. As busy as your life gets, whatever's going on, no matter how big or small, at the end of the day, it's about family. In the LGBTQ community, not all of us are accepted and supported by our family. There's the family that you have and the family that you choose to have. But whether it's your blood family or those people that are like family to you, when it comes down to it, no matter how hectic or chaotic everything is, it's about keeping yourself grounded. It's about being surrounded by people that you unconditionally love. In 2015, on Christmas Eve, my entire family gathered in a nursing home in Pacifica, California. We were there for Baca. Seven years earlier, she'd been diagnosed with stage four stomach cancer. The doctors originally gave her six months to live. Clearly, they didn't know my Baca. She was a fighter. Still, as most of us who have had family members dealing with terminal cancer know, it got really bad in the end. Baca held on because she knew all of the family was coming into town on Christmas Eve to visit her. She held on in order to say goodbye to everyone. It was her final act of strength. We all took pictures, her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren said their goodbyes. We sat with her and held her hand. We shared stories. We laughed and loved on each other. My grandmother shared many things with me during her lifetime. But one of the most important things she used to tell me was, your reputation will go places that she will never go. That was kind of her way of saying, act right. <laughs> In more ways than she will ever realize, it helped me in my career as a professional athlete. I carry her advice with me everywhere. All of us have an opportunity to be there for somebody, be it family, friends, teammates, or even colleagues. The task is right in front of us. We must be more accepting of everyone. We must be more loving. We must extend sympathy to people facing unseen obstacles in their daily lives. All of us in this room, each and every one of us, can be the glue that holds. Just like my grandmother was the glue for our family, we can all be the glue. So here's to Beatrice Jackson, my Baca. Thank you.